good morning to you all. So today, what we'll be speaking about, we'll be discussing, is a, the so-called particle world. Particle world, essentially particles, what do we mean? The smallest things in the universe. Okay, how small? Well, let us see as we go ahead. And so what, this is the plan of my talk. First, some introduction. Then I'll discuss what exactly is an atom. And when we discuss atoms, we can think of the classical particles. So what are those classical particles? And after that, later a lot of new particles came. And uh, what are those new particles? <coughs> Uh, there are quite uh, some experiments done. And uh, if I had time later, uh, I'll talk about what's called quarks. Okay. So I'll keep asking you some questions because I should know, uh, you know, how to proceed. <coughs> Can you hear me at the back? Yeah, thank you. So, uh, so our, what is our aim? to understand nature, correct? No, in size. Uh, so in this particular case, what matter is made up of? Okay. So how do we go about? So the next slide will tell us how we go around doing that. What is this one here? Can somebody tell me? What is the monkey doing? What's the monkey doing? It's trying to break something, correct? So, actually, that is the method we use to find what is inside, say, atom or proton or whatever. Okay. And so, now, you see, actually, this, can anybody recognize this, uh, these dolls? What they're called? You know, one inside the other, like that? Huh? Yes, somebody there? No? These are called Matryoshka dolls. These are actually Russian, but actually, you know, somebody went to Russia to get that, and actually it's made in our Chattapatna. Yeah, just here. Okay. So there are a lot of Indian dolls also now. So actually, nature is something like this. Okay. We will go, we will see that, but for example, here, something called atom, that we look inside, that this is the nucleus. Then we look inside, then we got the proton or neutron or whatever, then we look inside something else, quarks or whatever. So, just like this monkey was doing, breaking open, actually this is what <coughs> is done by scientists also. For example, this is uh, uh, the famous accelerator. What accelerator is, let us uh, discuss later. Some machine which gives energy to particles. Okay, and uh, actually it's in Geneva, it's Switzerland. And it was very famous recently. Can anybody tell me why it was famous? LHC, have you seen it in newspapers? You must have seen. Something called God particle? Yes. Uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. Yes? Yes. So you, that connection you have heard, that's called actually X boson. Okay. So that's the machine which found it. Okay, some six, six seven years ago. And uh, that's what really is done in these experiments also, break open something. So the next slide, what we'll do is we'll start with atoms, something very uh, simple but complex at one time. So let's just, you see, a long, long time ago, you know, some 2,000 plus years ago, some people they started thinking about what is this, for example, this, what is this made of? So there were two gentlemen who came out with some idea, okay? They said all matter is made of indivisible particles. What is indivisible? You cannot break open further. Okay, that's the end. So they called it atoms. It, there, is, there is a gentleman called Kanada in our India. Uh, this is before Christ. Uh, Democritus in Greece. He called, Kanada called it Paramadu. Uh, we call it atoms in English, okay? So how did they, okay, that was quite some time ago. So what did scientists do? You see, about 1,000 years ago or something like that, 
what people were trying to do. These were what you call the beginning of science in some way. Some people called alchemists. Have you heard the word alchemist? There's a famous book called Alchemist. Has anybody read? Ah, see, by who? Paul Coelho, okay, yeah. Okay, so these alchemists, what they were doing was, I mean, you know, they were all poor people, so they were trying to make gold. So, in this search of gold, they did something very interesting. Nobody found gold, even including our great Newton, who tried that. Okay, but what they did was actually they laid the foundations of chemistry in the sense that, for example, they supplied us with today's the, the instruments of chemistry with the methods of chemistry, Colonel Vidharati, methods of chemistry. Okay, so that was the great thing about alchemists, and of course, we'll see later. I don't know whether we'll do that, but you can ask me later, of course atoms can be what you call transmit, transmutation of atoms that great Rutherford did much later. Okay, So at least at that time nobody could make gold, nobody got rich, uh, but chemistry, start, chemistry was being born. So let us see chemistry for a little. And some of these people you may know or you may not know, I do not, doesn't really matter the names at this stage. Okay, what they did was First, uh, there is a fellow called Cavendish, okay, you know, in England. What he did was, one of the very interesting things he did was to find the most basic element in the universe. What is the most basic element? Hydrogen. Yes, you know it, okay. So it was the great Cavendish. He did some very nice things also in physics. And so later, people started finding different things. Now, for example, we come to this guy called Priestley, Joseph Priestley, also in England. He only went to America later. And uh, so this is the time, you know, and these are the people, I don't even know whether you can see them from the back, doesn't matter. So Priestley discovered oxygen, okay? Very interesting thing he did. In the, just a few days ago, actually, it was the uh, anniversary of Priestley's discovery of oxygen. Okay, so then came this man called Lavoisier in France. Okay, and actually did many, many interesting experiments. And, uh, but we will, what the most important thing he said was, the idea of an element was coming slowly. Something what Democritus or Canada thought. Something very, what they thought was indivisible. And he said, no, hydrogen and oxygen are very basic elements, he said, okay. That means everything else is made out of these things. So the next step was laid by Dalton in England, in Manchester, and he went further, and he stated the first atomic theory. Now, there is a loss, let's not worry about it, but he really was the first one to say these are made of small particles called atoms. And now from then on it became a little like kind of, uh, uh, they wanted to make it very kind of uh, what you call, put everything in order. And this gentleman from Russia, George Mendeleev, he let us see, that, let's systematize the, how he classified the elements and made the periodic table. You know, something great happened this, I think this uh, month about periodic table. Anybody? Periodic table, actually we had the 150th discovery just last week sometime. Okay, what is the periodic table? You, you, ha you have all seen that, correct? But let us see it again. Uh, this is the uh, periodic table here. There are lots and lots of elements there. And so what do we, what do, what do we want to know here? Here is uh, actually they were called atomic weight. They were based on atomic weight. And as you said very clearly, the most, uh, the lightest element is hydrogen the universal element, then comes helium, etc. So, now we have the light elements, they have the medium elements like carbon, etc. and oxygen, then iron, nickel, higher, very high, late uranium, etc. So, now it's about 1900. How many years ago is 1900? Can somebody tell me? 
When was the 1800? Ashwar Shahid Day. Okay, good. So, 119 years ago. And so, what happened was, in this and cartoon, till now we have been talking about chemistry. This is the time physics comes in. Physics asks some more basic questions than chemistry. Okay? At least uh, some of us think so. Uh, so, they started asking, what is this atom? Okay? So, now we get some answers to these questions now. So, the first thing to be found was something called electron. You see, what happened was earlier days in the 18th, 19th century, people were doing a lot of experiments on electricity. Okay, do you know some of the names of the great scientists who did electricity experiments? Yes? Yes, yes, I hear something. Yes, Michael Faraday, a great man, great experimentalist. There are many people like that, Arsted, Appiah, etc. So, so there was an idea slowly that current, what is current? Current, they said, is some electrons, some particles are moving. Okay, that's what we call uh, current. But they didn't know what electrons were. They just said something is passing through, and let's call them electrons. So, then this gentleman called J.J. Thompson in England, he did one of the first experiments here in his 1897. Now, many places I have put NP here, okay? Uh, essentially, it means Nobel Prize uh, that year. Hopefully, that years are, those years are correct. So, throughout, you will see this. I won't mention that, but you can read that. So, there are several places this NP is mentioned. So, what he did, you see, there was, I mean, your generation has not seen the uh, televisions which we used to use, okay? They are old-fashioned television tubes, you know, so big. Have you seen anybody? This huge, huh? You have seen, no? So those used to contain what we call a TV tube, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's uh, physics, we call it a cathode, cathode, cathode ray tube. And uh, what they did actually was electrons get out of this place, and uh, we put a magnetic field, I know, magnetic field, you don't know. What happens to particles in magnetic field? Something happens to charged particles, particles in magnetic field. Do they just stay the same? Stay the same. Yes, correct. So they change the direction here, depending on the way the field is. Okay. So we have this uh, thing. And because needed by many, many things to find out really, I'm just making it very simple. Look, it looks simple. And so he said, yes, this is a very great thing he did. All matter has electrons. Okay. And he called it a particle. You see, we were not sure what exactly it was. Uh, this is the first elementary particle to be discovered. And he also made a model of an atom, which I won't go into at the very moment. Okay? So, okay, atom and now electron. What's the next step now? Can anybody tell me? Yes, please? Uh-huh. Rutherford? Okay, very good, thank you. Hey, whenever somebody answers, you have to really clap, no? She has taken, huh? Thank you. Okay, please make it a habit. It's a very good thing because, you know, it's, it gives her also, you, know, you feel nice, no, when somebody claps? No, that's good, I also feel nice. So, all right, the next step, as you very correctly guessed, is the Rutherford model. Okay, so uh, actually what Rutherford, Mr. Rutherford was already, he had a Nobel Prize, I, uh, you did come over the last lecture, in 1908 itself he got a Nobel Prize. And Rutherford is one of the greatest scientists of all time. And so he did what we today call particle physics, the typical experiment. What he did, just like what these monkeys did, you know, hit something with something. Okay, and here is his experiment. Again, I won't go deep into that. Okay, and what he did really was to hit a gold foil. Okay, this small room like this, darkened room. Why dark? You can ask me later, or you can uh, during the question hour. Why should it be dark? I don't know. Okay, so he did 
part alpha particles. How did he get alpha particles? Where did he get alpha particles from? Can anybody guess? I mean, you know, I'm saying hit this with something. Where do I get this beam? Beam or whatever you call particles. How, how do you get it? Huh? Any guesses? Where does it? It does, doesn't come from sky. Of course, it comes from sky. Somebody said? Yeah, please repeat a little loud, you know. You are too, uh, what you call, bellow. I'm, I don't can't hear well, so please, loud, okay. Huh? Helium. 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 Okay, where does it, okay, helium is correct, helium nucleus, but how does it get that? You're correct, totally correct. Alpha particle is called helium nucleus, correct. How did you get it? Some, ah, exactly, radioactivity. So some element, I forget exactly which one, was giving out these things, and so he put it there and let alpha particles hit that, okay? So what he found was something very, very interesting. He found that actually there is something very heavy sitting inside the atom, okay? And how he found, again, let us talk about it later. But now the question is this. Now we talk of charge. Electron has got what type of charge? Huh? Okay, if you call that positive, I have to call something else negative. Okay, no, it's just a matter of conversion. So let us call it negative. Okay, so atom is what? You know, an element, do you think it has charge? What do you mean? Zero charge is called neutral. Okay. Do you think it has got charge? Huh? No. So, now you have electron. That's a negative fellow. Now we have something sitting there at the center. So what charge should it get? Positive. Very correct. Okay. So, sorry. So atom has a heavy positive charge at the center. Later, of course, we came to know those are protons, etc. That is a, uh, something else we'll do later. Okay. So, now, Mr. Rutherford did something very interesting also. He thought of a model. You see, in science, what we do is we think of model. Model means currently mother in TV, and there's some type of a design you want. Okay? So he thought of a design for an atom. And he was very clever. And he thought of something which was there in the universe on a much bigger scale. What did he think of? Okay, he, let us think of something. Something middle, very heavy. Something going around, electron. Okay, so where do you find this type of thing in the universe? Solar exactly, solar system. So Mr. Rutherford thought of the solar system model. You see, this is very important for you to realize because it shows the beauty of nature. Okay, now for the smallest thing, it has got the same design. That means we'll see that more clearly later. It has got a positive charge and a negative charge and something heavy. But the biggest thing also like solar system. It's got only thing is the actual laws, physical laws are different. Okay, what? Let us see what. For example, now if you have positive here, if you have a negative here, what is, a, what is the type of, is there a force between? Yeah, which one? Attraction. Okay, you have attraction here. That's the what we call the Coulomb or something like that. Static electron. But what about the solar system? What is the force there? You have Earth getting attracted to the sun. Yeah. So see, see, see this nice thing now. Uh, universe has thought of the same design now. There, the gravitational force works. And even I won't go deeper, something called inverse square law that we won't worry about. And here also is the same thing, okay? Okay, let us proceed, otherwise we'll get stuck here only, okay? So now, do uh, the first set nucleus and there's proton. Now we need something else now, okay? So what could be the next step? Huh? Wow, great, I think you should give the lecture here. 
Thank you very much. And uh, I think you should clap yourself because all of you gave it. So, <laughs> OK, so all right. Now there is something in the middle I won't talk about this gentleman who is very, very important. But uh, I will skip it to the very end if I have time, or you can ask. OK, it's because it's not just simple. You know, we said I made it very simple. Solar system, they're similar to our atom. Something more is there in atom that uh, Mr. Bohr brought in, but we won't worry about it now, OK? So then what is the thing you yourself said? You see, why do we need neutron? Let us think about it. You people all said neutron, very clear, very correct answer. Why do we need neutron? Why do we need neutron? There are several reasons we need neutrons. OK, let us see. Does somebody give one idea? I actually return that. If, if you are clever enough to read that, that is enough. OK? Whatever it is, the first three lines, somebody can read. We can read, no? Somebody, loud, 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 somebody. Huh? OK, now, uh, just let's stop there, OK? So you see why now somebody said helium. No, helium, for example, you said helium. What has helium got? Helium nucleus? Protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons. OK, now, what's the charge of helium? Neutrons. Huh? Neutrons. What did she say? Neutrons. Helium nucleus now we are talking about. You are correct. Helium atom is neutron. Helium nucleus. Positive. Nucle correct, positive. OK. Now, the point is, how much charge has it got? We have got the periodic table. First, we said hydrogen, charge 1, mass 1. Helium, charge 2, mass 4. No, that's the problem there. It's not mass 2 there. OK. Mass 4. So we got to put in something else. OK. Now, uh, Mr. Chadwick, he found out neutron. Oh, you see, it's all done in England very interestingly, the first three particles. And uh, so he discovers neutron. But now we should know a little more. OK, somewhere he brought it from some neutron particle or whatever. You put it there. But there is another basic reason for it to be there. One, of course, it has to fill up the atom. As we will see later, atom goes on getting filled with lots of protons and neutrons and all that. But there is another reason why neutron has to sit there. OK? Why could it be? OK, probably it may not be uh, this thing. You see, OK, let us see. Two protons sitting here. What will happen? We know, so we said proton, electron get attracted. What happens if you put two protons? Huh? Repel. So how are we going to put two protons together in the atom? So it is still repelling, but there is some other force responsible for it, and that is called the nuclear force. OK, neutron also has it. Neutron doesn't have the, uh, what you call the uh, uh, electromagnetic force. OK, so we will see lots and lots of neutrons you will need, because sometimes it may not be enough to contain protons. So neutrons bring in the nuclear force, and protons also, nuclear force plus electromagnetic force. OK, so that's the role of neutron. OK, now we are somewhere in 1930. OK, I'm just asking you one small historic question. What was happening in our country in 1930s? Politics. 1930s. Huh? Huh? What, one person. Huh? In our India. That's true. But it was true. Very true. Good, you are a universal person. Good. Now, tell me in India what is it? Oh, come on, loud, you should be. You see, the problem is, as I said, I can't hear, and you should be. You should. Ah, somebody said what? Ah, and who was one of the main persons? OK, great. OK, we'll shift back from Gandhi to uh, Chadwick now. OK, thank you. So, so we are in 1930s. We have all these particles. Uh, very nicely, atomic theory atoms are all uh, explained. 
And so people started, you see, what, what happens is when it comes to some stage, people will ask more questions now. So somebody said, okay, all these particles are sitting. Why not there should be, why, what is so great? It, a, a negative charge. Electron is their negative charge. Why should not there be positive charge also? We need something called symmetry, okay? Because nature, people said, should it be symmetry? Why should, what, there should be nothing predominant or something. So people said, whether proton or electron or whatever, they should have something called antiparticle. What's an antiparticle? For example, for uh, electron, what charge the antiparticle would have? They would have the positive thing, okay? So, this is the great Dirac, great uh, theorist. Uh, so this is Anderson who discovered that. And as I said, there are some NPs written, you can see that. Uh, so every particle now, you should understand, not just electron. It, a proton will have, neutron will have. So proton, we'll see what, what type of antiparticle it will have, okay? So they said, why not antiparticles? Okay, so now we come to the next stage. This is actually uh, something showing how uh, proton, uh, anti, uh, positron was discovered. Let us skip that for the moment. Okay, so we thought of hydrogen now. What is there in hydrogen? A proton and an electron going. Now, if you want to think of something called anti-hydrogen, you know, everything you're talking about anti-anti here, okay? And anti-matter is basically anti-hydrogen plus other antis. So you can see what I want you to uh, really appreciate here is the symmetry in nature, okay? So here, what we get here is instead of a proton, we get something an antiproton. And something else will be going around that, okay? Antiproton will have proton as positive charge. Antiproton, negative charge, correct. So that was electron, this is positron. Positron has what charge? Positive charge. Okay, so this antimatter, uh, so, uh, so now it's, uh, we'll just take it for granted, all particles have antiparticles, okay? So uh, we'll get more and more, but I have to go fast. Mr. Nagra, you'll stop me soon if I don't do that. So at about 1935, all these particles were there. And most of chemistry, biology, etc. I think you can explain just with these particles. What? Proton, neutron, electron. Now we get new particles. Something called neutrino, which I'll explain a little later, is, was also said to be there. Okay, we'll see how it was discovered later. Okay, and a neutral particle. Now, mass is something which I have not talked about. This is almost no mass or zero or very little mass. Okay. Now, what, shall we think of electron and proton? Now, actually, I think I have that somewhere in the next slide. Okay, ah, good. You see, in nuclear physics and particle physics, when we talk of energy, uh, we don't usually use the familiar arc type of notation, okay? We use something called electron volt. Electron volt is something very simple in some ways. And it's just the energy gain you know, electron accelerated, some type of capacitors you put or something, uh, then you will get uh, what's the uh, voltage it will get. So that energy, that is your so many 10 to the power of minus 19. I don't know, it's difficult to imagine 10 to the power of 19. So let us think of something else. So this is the electron volt. Actually, it's very interesting. All this light here, you know, all this by difference of light. They all have energies of electron volt, one electron volt, little later like that. Okay, and if you go into your doctor's office, you see the X-rays, and that one also a photon. I'll come to photons very soon. And that is a thousand gamma rays, much higher. And electron now is a half billion. Billion is how many zeros? Three. Huh? Six. Six. Billion? Nine. Okay. It goes like that. Three, three, three trillion, twelve, like that. 
it, uh, it, uh, in uh, India, we use different rotations. Okay. So you can see the difference here. Proton is very, very heavy. This is almost 2,000 times, half MeV. This is not exact, huh? almost. So uh, that is the type of thing. OK. So one TV that I wrote for yesterday's, we are not talking about TV here, though. No. OK. So OK, now we have all these particles. We keep saying that. Uh, the neutron, proton, all that have that. And neutrino will be very, very small. OK. And we'll see how small, if we can. OK, now another particle came in. You see, Einstein, who was born in the late 19th century, uh, he said, till that time, till Einstein came in 1905, he said, light is thought of as a wave, you know, wave, something like this, correct? But Einstein said, light can exist also as a particle. OK? And he called that photon, which you are very familiar with photo, the word photo, okay, and uh, that's photon there. And uh, so uh, we will also, especially in particle physics, we think of light as photons. We talk of, as I said, different energies photon. So it's essentially an elementary particle. So actually, I should add this also to my list of particles, okay. So let me just go very fast now. I have 10 minutes. OK. So let me skip some of these. OK. So where do we get these particles? As I already told you, we get in radioactivity. You know, Rutherford got his uh, alpha particles from radioactivity. And there's something called cosmic rays. If you had come yesterday, I would have talked a lot about cosmic rays. You would have heard. OK, so what are cosmic rays? There are lots of particles coming from different parts of the universe. And they come, they interact, with, they hit some other thing, like oxygen nuclei, nitrogen nuclei, whatever. They make more and more particles. So we today, for example, this room will have plenty of particles. Okay, And what are those particles? They will, of course, have protons, neutrons, and some new particles, which I'll talk about. OK, and actually, if you go to uh, the demonstration up, we will see something called a muon, which I'll be talking about very soon, hopefully. OK, so these are lots of particles. And so here, uh, you see the particle coming and making lots and lots of particles. What happens is when two particles combine, the energy will go into creation of new particles. That's what happens with all this. OK. so. Now, a lot of new particles are found, something called pi r. OK, I won't talk about it now, but you should ask. It's called a pi meson. What's a meson? Let us keep it for later, because I am very uh, this thing to go into other things. Now, uh, here I'm sure you people will identify this gentleman. Who is this? OK, now these two people probably not. This is Mr. Yukawa. He was the one who suggested pi meson should exist, Japanese theorist. This is Vira, who is very famous for his black hole idea. Of course, many people went into black hole idea, but anyway. And here is somebody else who we may or may not recognize. Can you recognize this man? I don't know. Difficult for somebody there? Can you see clearly? No. OK. This is a gentleman called Hobi Baba. OK, he was he's central to our story here. Hobi Baba was uh, an Indian scientist who worked earlier in England, later who worked in India. Uh, he was famous for starting experiments in fundamental research, also atomic energy programs, and several. As you grow older, I'm sure you will come to know more and more. One of the things he did was he was responsible for some of the experiments starting at a very nearby place called KGF. Has anybody seen KGF? Been Kolar region, anybody from? All from Bangalore? Oh, OK. You should go to Kolar. And what will you see there? You will see this. This is called a shaft. You see, Kolar had gold mine. 
And actually, that saved a long, long time ago, so there was gold was coming from there. But a modern mine was set up about 100 years ago. And mine means you go, you know, mine you, go, you have to go underground, correct? Okay. So here was gold was being mined. Okay. And so it was a um, place to do some experiment. What experiments do we do? You see, I said new particles were coming in, okay, is the cosmic rays, and something is called a beyond here. Okay, this is, do you, do you recognize this Greek letter? Anybody familiar with Greek uh, alpha, beta, gamma, etc.? Okay, so they did some very interesting experiments, and what was done was, you see, the particle just goes through matter. It lots of matter without getting just keeps going. This is a, what you call a train. And if some other particle will do all this. But this one will go on like that. Uh, so deep in the mind also, you hope to get these particles. Okay. So that is how this experiment was started in the 50s uh, to find this so-called beyond. Okay. And uh, what happened was when they went very, very, very deep, they found this the went, number, of course, went on decreasing, as this graph shows. But when you went very deep, it was almost nothing. So they said that is the place where you want to do new things. If you want new particles, you come and do that there. If, what do you mean by new particle? You see, the point is this. Now, let us say you want to see stars. In Bangalore, you cannot see stars, correct? So where do you go? You go to your jungle, because pollution of light is not there. Similarly, pollution of particles is not there. If you go down, 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 uh, they did some of the very first, what you call neutrino experiments. This is actually neutrino is very important for this particular uh, program which we are ha having now. And so here is what the uh, first experiment was done. I'll just show you. That is very uh, probably difficult for you to understand. Some of the equipment was there, and so first time. Cosmic ray neutrino was found in 1965 in Kolar gold fields. Okay, and lots of experiments were done later, but this is a very important thing. So I'm going to stop here because Nagraj is telling me to stop. I'm being very, uh, I'm sticking to your time, so you must give me a little more time later. So, uh, so this is the story of neutrinos. Of course, this is only the beginning of the thing. Now let me just skip through fast if I can, and. There's something called quark. Let's not worry about it. Find out, I'll just, okay. Now, I will just want to say, because yesterday some people asked me this question. So this type of research, what use is it? Two people or somebody have asked me this question. Okay. Now, the thing is there is really practically no use for all this. Okay. All these people like, you know, when J.J. Thompson did it, experiment, Rutherford did all this. But as you can see, Rutherford did the atom, this thing, the nucleus. So today we have the atomic energy, the nuclear energy. So when you do an experiment, you don't think of what else. You just do to try to get some of these things, okay? So fundamental science experiments are like that. But it may have some other effect because for doing this, as you will hear, probably you may not hear today, you need bigger and bigger, ex bigger apparatus. So new ideas come in, engineering ideas. And another very interesting thing is, particle physics has been used for medicine. Today, you know, for you are all familiar with X-rays. But particles today, which were thought of as useless, like pion. Pion was for something else. But today you have pions in the lab, in, in the, hospitals, you have positrons. Why? For example, for cancer, for detection of these things. They can do better job than your x-rays. So, you see how something which was just something somebody mind somewhere of some particle and also discovered, but later became some useful. But that is all later. But when you do it, you just do it to understand nature. Okay? So I would like to stop here. And there are so many other things. Uh, of course, we don't have time. And, uh, see, for example, uh, they say that an accelerator is called cyclotron. 
there are more of them in hospitals than in uh, laboratories. Okay, so uh, I'm ending this. And okay, now um, I don't know. This stage it's a little difficult, but there are lots of books about these things. I'm sure today you could Google better than me, and there are very interesting books. Uh, there are some, and so that's where I want to stop. Thank you. What are quarks? Quarks. Okay. Now, what are quarks? You see, okay. Now, you know, what happened was, first we thought atom was something which is the most fundamental thing, correct? I showed you also molecule, atom. Then we thought proto nucleus was the most fundamental thing. But then we said, no, Mr. Rutherford came and said, no, no, no. Proton is the most fundamental thing. But people started thinking that, well, there was reasons for them to think. Let's not uh, go deep into that. And somebody called Gelman, who died recently, what he said was, no, no, even this proton, neutron have particles inside them. Okay? So he called them quarks. Okay? Now, there are six quarks actually, but he, came, he gave the, at that time, it was three. Okay? And so quarks are essentially what makes up, you see, now, now let, let us again go to this slide, big one. Now, this one here, this is called. Uh, the, most, the fundamental particles today. Please notice here, proton is not there in the list, neutron is not there in the list. Okay, and no pi r, etc., etc. Okay, so what we have here is your electron, the good old, very old particle. And something called muon, which I talked about little, these are called neutrinos. This forms a group called lepton. Lepton means low mass, that's all. Though that's not strictly true, but doesn't matter. Okay, so now this is, for example, we know well, electron goes around, proton and all that. So what is sitting inside proton are these things. These are quarks. Don't worry about the names, they're not important. There's something which are sitting inside, up, down, etc., etc. some strange names they gave. Okay, so uh, and as I told you, these, if an electron wants to talk to another electron, so we need something, some other particle, we call it photon. These are so-called bosons. And the boson word, as I told you or I did tell you, came from Dr. Satyendranath Bose, the great uh, uh, physicist of last century. And so same, there are other things, gluon, etc. Same way there is six boson. Okay. So quarks are just essentially, these are all called, these are what matter. You see, now matter is like, for example, in a house, you got to put in bricks, correct? So these are the bricks of nature. How exactly it decides, let's not worry about it. Uh, but some these bricks have to be cemented together now. So this work is done by these guys, these bosons. Okay? So that's the these are the fundamental particles as we know today. Okay, tomorrow something somebody may say quark has structure. Most probably not, but maybe we don't know. Uh, so that's quite good. We'll take one more question. Just so that there are three quarks. So we had two questions, one quark. So come, come, come. You see, the thing is, if I had come to your school, I would have bothered you so much. So you don't have let me you know. I, I just stand there until people ask me questions. But this is. Uh, Museum here at Bela may ask us to go fast. So let's just ask one question. Nobody? Okay, I just want to say a little more about neutrino because I just did not have the time. This is what people do. You see, if you don't ask, speaker will go out like that. So, okay? So here, I just want to say a little more. You see, this part that it, uh, Bites. This Muir experiment in KGF really started neutrino work in India. Today we have a called India Neutrino Observatory, very ambitious, very important project at the moment in Tamil Nadu. Okay, I really hope these are mega projects. It'll take more time, and I'm sure when you grow up, you know, 
So some of you may go and work on that. Thank you again. Thank you. So, thank you, Professor Vishwanath, once again for the excellent introduction. No, I just want to give two books at least. Yeah. So, he is a very good science communicator, especially in so, Canada. Yeah, yeah. So, someone asked ah, about. Uh, this is it, but this is in Canada. Okay. okay. So, yeah, so can, uh, this is about please both please. physics and astronomy. What's your name? Neeraj Rangaswamy. Okay. So, you can so please take this. This is about both physics and astronomy.